Hey, baby cakes. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, using a food mill. Mm -hmm. And I just cooked some apples, so we're gonna make applesauce. You making applesauce? I'm trying. Bruh. 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 Yeah, except it keeps. You're like the pioneer woman. Pioneer woman. I don't know if we're getting much more out of this. This is just kind of the last bits. Got some blackberries. And, and we got some apples. And, and peaches. And peaches. And meat. And then these are all from here. Oh, <laughs> look at that guy. Okay, what? All right. What? All right. I think that's about all we're getting out of it. It's time for us to take a commercial oh God, break from the Pioneer up. Woman because we've got to feed all the ranchers out on the ranch. <laughs> and then make some uh, vanilla free make some cookware to sell in Target. Hey everybody, it's Okola and this is a Lefty Knitter Podcast. Episode 217? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I should have looked it up. I should have looked it up. All right, so this is a knitting podcast primarily, sometimes all their fibery goodness, but I have some things to show you. Uh, I record through the week and then I post it on the weekend sometimes. So today it's Sunday already, August 20th. I have some other clips I'm going to pop in here, but yeah, so let's get started. I'm going to pop in a video now. Oh, I should say from Baltimore. Uh, all my information can be found down below if you want to get in contact with me. I have an Etsy shop and I'm going to be talking about that later. So let me pop in this clip real quick. Okay, so I'm swatching for Miserina. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. I should probably look that up. But this was with a US 4, which is the recommended size in the pattern. This is a US 5, then a US 6, and a US 7. I'm gonna take the pins out, remeasure without it being pinned. I know this is kind of sloppy, but uh, it is what it is. I still have the balls attached because that's how I swatch. Um, but let me take this out and I will talk about it with you guys. So let's talk about a swatch. Let's talk about this swatch. The pattern calls for a US 4 and then you're going to get 20 stitches per 4 inches. So that's 5 stitches per inch. Done my swatch. Now, I should have started off at the beginning, um, and I did like 5 five stitches. I switched it up here. I did like 5 and then color work and then finished off. So I would be able to do one full repeat of the top of the chart. So here's my swatch. And it's probably not the greatest because I don't think I pulled my strings long enough for the back. So I could have blocked it out better. Also, this is really messy where the edge stitches are. But that w it won't be like that when you're going in the round. So this is a US 4 where I was getting... I have notes. Hold on. US 4, I was getting 28 stitches to the 4 inches. Okay, US 5, I was getting 26 stitches to 4 inches. US 6, I was getting 24. And US 7, I was getting 22. So I was getting the closest with a US 7. And it won't look as messy, I think, when I'm... I really like the look of the, of the 6, so... I'd have to do even more math, but let's go with what I already have written down. So you have to do some math. The fourth size, when you split here, is so many stitches. I don't want to give stitch counts away, but if I divide it by five, it's 48 inches. That's the right size. It's 48 inches on a size four for the bust circumference on that size with the right gauge. But with 5.5 stitches to the inch, because I was getting 22, it's only 43 inches, 43.8. So if that's the case, I'm only getting like two inches of ease in the bust. Remember, it's got cables. That's also going to pull it in. I didn't swatch cables. So the fifth size, taking the number when you split first 
um, sleeves and body is a certain number and you divide that by the five and it's 51 inches, which again is correct for the fifth size, 51.6 or whatever. It's, you know, I don't think it's exactly accurate. And then the fifth size divided by 5.5, which is what I'm getting with a US 7, is 46.9, which is almost 47, which then gives me five inches of positive ease. So I didn't do the math for a US 6, which would be even 26, I was getting 24 divided by four, so that's six stitches. So I didn't do the math there to find out if it would even be close. So I, and it's not going to be, I think I'd have to go up even another sweater size to the sixth size if I used US sixes. I think what I'm gonna do based on all the math that I've done to give me that 46.9 inch circumference here where you're splitting is using seven US seven needles and the fifth size. That's the math. If the math, if my math is right, that's where I'm at. I don't know. It's a little insane. I had to go up four, three needle sizes, but based on other comments, people also were going up. They were going up to sixes and sevens. Some people weren't. My yarn is a little thicker than a, fing a regular fingering. I think that, let me put my hand behind it. I actually think that's pretty. I think it would have a nice drape too. Six would too, but I, I really like the seven. So that's where I'm at. So I'd like to cast this on tonight. I'd like to rip this out, but maybe I will cut my yarn. I normally don't do that, but if I need a, a little ball at the end, I can just take this out. But yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I don't know. I'm very, it's okay. It's okay. I don't think it's uncommon because other people had to go up whole sweater sizes and they were going up needle sizes. So I don't think I'm the only person in this, you know, boat. Okay, so I was talking about the gauge on my Miserina. I also want to mention the Miserina. I want to mention that Amber from Am Ambie Marie Knits, I'll link her YouTube uh, channel down below. She's also casting one on. I had a few chats with her about um, gauge and whatnot because obviously I was not, I was not getting gauge. But it seems to be working out. I haven't really put it over. I'm going to show you guys where I'm at in this little later in the video but um yeah and then uh it's so funny I, I i didn't plan this to be like a knit along and it's not gonna be like a formal knit along because i am not good at that <laughs> i'm not good at a hosting and b keeping up so i want to just make this very informal but if you are making one i would appreciate if you did tag me on instagram so i could see how many people are making them i just think it's pretty pretty cool. Um, so Maddie and Kristen from We're, We Share Needles also talked about casting one on. So that's so exciting. Yay. Um, and then my knit group, I have, so this is my local knit group. I, um, they don't, I haven't really asked them to come on the YouTube channel, although they probably would. I just respect people, um, their privateness and whatnot. So I haven't really asked them, even though I've been doing this for, I don't know how long. And it would be fun to have them, like, if they wanted to, come and join and just show what they're working on. Because everybody's making different things all the time. So it's it's exciting. I do go, we meet um, once a week uh, at a brewery. And sometimes you see clips of me knitting at a brewery because I've popped them in. But let's see, there's uh, D is making one. I'm just using initials. D is making one. L is making one. J is making one. C said she's going to watch vicariously, both C's actually, are watching vicariously through our, we have a Facebook group that we use so we can 
um, do a roll call <laughs> to see who's able to make it. Cause sometimes we just don't end up making it out there. Like one of us can make it and then others can't. So, oh, and E is making one. So yeah, that's five of us. That's so exciting. I'm so excited about it. Uh, yeah, so that's where we're at. So let me, and then it was so, it's just been weird cause I think other people even talked about it and I can't remember, but then I jumped on the Grocery Girls Live this week and Jody was wearing one. I believe it's from her own hand dyed yarn business and somebody had made it as like a sample for her. So I'm like, holy crap, this pattern. It's just like, everybody's making it right now. I don't know. I just, it's been in my queue for a long time. And I had that yarn that I had purchased and I was like, oh, this is like enough. This is perfect. And I was like, I'm going to do this. And then I talked about it and I don't know. I blew up the universe. I'm not sure what happened. Sorry, my hair is just being air dried. Uh, we've been cleaning the basement. I was able to get haze to get rid of some stuff. That's always exciting. Um, decluttering is hard and it's not so much decluttering. It's, it's getting rid of things that like have memories and like, I guess it's hard for it's, she's not, this is the first time she's gotten rid of like a big amount. So it was really hard for me because some of the things she was like, oh, I'll get rid of this. And I was like, I just got you that like a year ago. And I'm like, I have to stop that. I have to let it go. I have to let it go. Let it go. Okay. Don't want to get copyrighted, but, uh, I, I have to just let her make that decision because if I don't let her make that decision, then she's going to do what I do and not want to get rid of things. I have gotten much better over my 41 years of letting things be out of, out of my existence. And that's hard. And it's really hard. I've talked really fast for a long time. Okay. I need to insert another video here. I'm going to talk about the, actually, let me just talk about it now and then I'll put this video in. Okay. So in the pattern for Miserina, there's some spaces where you have a longer stretch of, um, between color work. So when you do that, you can catch your floats. Usually, uh, catching your floats is fine. It doesn't always show through. I have now begun to, I don't mind catching floats, but when it's in that same spot all the time and you can only shift it so many stitches once in a while, I feel like it's gonna, it's, it's gonna eventually show. So I decided not to do that. And lots of people in their pattern pages have done the jacquard ladder back or ladder back jacquard. I can't remember which direction that goes, but it is a technique where it, it essentially is making floats behind your work, but you will not see that stitch where you caught your float, where you catch it, where you twist your two yarns catching the float. So this is a technique that you start it either with a backward loop cast on or by picking up and doing a lifted increase and making a stitch. Now the difference between that, I learned this too, the difference between doing your, you're getting to your color, you're getting to where the big span is, you go so many stitches, you either do a backwards loop cast on or you pick up and do a lifted increase with the contrast color. The difference between those two is if you do a um, lifted increase, which is what I have done, and I'll show you guys this. I did a lifted increase. The back, that catches it at, it attaches it to your fabric on the back side, you still can't see it, but it attaches it. The backward loop, you're creating a backward loop cast. If you've ever done that, it's creating a stitch, but it is not attached to your fabric, your existing fabric. The difference is most people in hats or gloves or maybe even socks, if you don't catch it, if you don't attach it to your fabric. If you do a backwards loop cast on the jacquard fabric, ladder back fabric you're creating in the back of your main fabric can bunch up. So people don't do the backwards loop on say hats and gloves. Oh, I shouldn't say they don't, they can, but it, the fabric can bunch up behind the main fabric. If you, and for a sweater, 
I wouldn't have done that, but I didn't like the backward loop look. It, I was, I was worried about that. So I just didn't, right? Okay. I just chose to do the lifted increase. If you do the lifted increase, like I said, it attaches to your fabric. So when you're putting on that hat and it was knit bottom up, where the fa the fabric you created in the back isn't going to bunch up on the inside of your hat. It is going to be attached to your main fabric by one little stitch, but it and it won't bunch up. So there's pros and cons to doing either way. So it's your choice, but many people did in the project pages, they did this technique. I chose to do this technique right behind the cables. So there's cables, color work, cables, color work, cables, color work. You can see that in the pattern pictures. I chose to do it behind, let me just, well, let me insert video here because I wanted to show you how I did the ladder back jacquard or jacquard, whatever that's called, how I did this technique behind the cables because if you did it right at the beginning of the cable, you have a big span, or if you did it at the end of the cable, you have a big span of color. So I did it right in the middle. Because of that, you had to do a little bit of critical thinking of how to make that stitch work because you're pulling your main yarn to the front of your needles. That way, when you pull it back, after you do your one jacquard stitch, ladder back stitch, you put the main yarn to the back again, and that kind of hides, um, it hides that contrast color stitch. Uh, so let me insert a video here because I show you that twice and I show you where I messed up. I don't show you fixing it, but I messed, I missed one. I had like two sets of cables and there was supposed to be a third set of cables. I did all of them, but like one section. <laughs> so I dropped down and fixed that. So let me insert video now. Okay. Here is Misarina Progress. I've done through t row 29 of the chart and I'm getting ready to do row 30, but I wanted to show you guys, I'm doing ladder back jacquard knitting. So what that means is when you have a space that's real wide, you want to catch your float and you don't want it to be visible. So how I'm doing it is I'm doing it behind the cable, which is a little confusing. So I wanted to show you all, let me try to do this, move it down more show you how I do it. Okay, so let's hope I can keep it all in frame when I do it. So I'm at the point, I'm hiding it. This is that where you catch the float. It's not really attached. Um, I'll talk more about that. But that's all the ladder back to card extra fabric. Okay, so to do it, it has to, you have to move stuff to the front and whatever. So it's a little confusing when you're doing it here with the cable, because I'm hiding it behind the cable. Okay, so you gotta take two stitches to go to the back, but you also need to take the ladder back to card stitch. So you take those, you move them to the back. You're gonna knit two stitches. One, two. Now, You've done that. Now you have to do your float. So you're going to put your float back onto your working, your, your needle, sorry. You have to bring everything to the front. So you have to bring your stitches that are the cable. You have to bring your yarn to the front. Now you're going to work with your float color. You're going to knit your float. Then you're going to bring everything back. and you're going to knit your two other cable stitches. It's a little bit trickier because you have that float there written right in the middle of the cable. Some people I think were putting it here or here, but then you still have a pretty big gap. So, all right, so I'm just going to do that again for you guys, but let me, I'm not gonna knit the color work. I will um, get to the next one and do it. Just, well, you could always just rewind what I just did. I don't know. Also, dummy me on the next one. Look what I forgot to do. I was supposed to have a cable in here. So I'm going to drop down and do my cable and then do a cable. <laughs> ah. All right, let's try to fix this. So I need to drop down 
four stitches, but I'm going to take two off. I'm going to put my float just on a holder because I'm not going to drop that down. There's no point. Okay, because that's all hidden in the back anyway. All right, so, oh boy, really, I'm going to drop one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to pick up here. So one, two, And we're going to drop three and four. All right. Then we're going to fix this. Or attempt to. Uh. Okay. So we have four here. I didn't do something right. This is one, two, three, four. <laughs> Ugh, what a mess. Okay, I might just record th not record this because I'm making a mess. But I've dropped down, I'm going to fix them, and I'll pull it back up. Okay, I fixed it. It's fixed. It'll block out a little. I got to lock it out a little but let's show you how I do that again real quickly so um, doing the cable with the card laddering holding the phone with my legs so it's very bouncy so you need to pick up two plus your jacquard ladder back stitch hold it to the back okay then you're gonna knit two one, two. Okay, then you got to bring everything to the front for the jacquard part. Okay, so bring your stitches to the front, bring your main yarn to the front. What did I do here? Oh, yeah, that's right. And you have to put this stitch back on your needle. That's what I didn't do. Okay. Now you're going to pick up your working, your cast on your second color, knit it. Okay. Then you drop it. Then you bring everything back to the back again, including your working yarn. Okay. And then you're going to knit the rest of your cape. One, two, and then you can pull that tight. And that's how you get your jacquard ladder back behind the cable without uh, messing up the cable or whatever. So you can kind of pull one up over here. Here's the jacquard ladder back. You start it. I started it here. And it's all this purple, maroonish color. I hope the video wasn't too shaky. I know I was kind of holding it with my legs, the tripod, not the best way. Also, because I was holding it right in front of me, I was looking through the camera versus looking at my hands, so I was a little fumbly. But let me show you guys where I'm at. So I ended up, I was worried about the ladder back technique. I had only done it once before. So I put a lifeline in. I put a lifeline in. This orange yarn is my lifeline. And I put that in between. I put, I should have pulled it to the back. So here's all your short rows. Then you have some lace and then you go into the color work. Well, I didn't want to have to rip all of it out. So I put my, I put a lifeline in before my color work started. So you can see, here's my cables. And I had missed, I did one too and I had missed one. But it's fine, I fixed it. 
it's fine. So I am at the tops of these flowers or whatever they are, they're done and I'm starting like the stems or the leaves or whatever um, they are. So I've gotten pretty far. I, uh, if I put it on a bigger needle, I could put it over my head and really try it on. I probably should, but I haven't. But I wanted to show you guys if you can see one of the sections. Okay, let's show this one here. This is all that extra fabric you're creating behind with your contrast color, right? This first one, this first, first, first one is attached. You can't see it. If I push it through, you can see it, but you can't see it. And all the fabric after that is not attached. See, not attached. It's just the last, this last stitch up here is attached. So I did that between, uh, behind all my cables. So all my cables have this pretty little fabric. Now I did a knit stitch versus a purl stitch. If you did a purl stitch, you would have the, this would all be one row of knitting down the back. So if you watch some videos on the technique, you'll see that some people purl the stitch. When they get to that stitch, this, this fake stitch that you make, they purl it. And you can see I have one at every, it's right here. Here's my cables. It's right here. So I just am knitting it versus purling it. So of course I get pearls on the back. If you purled it, you would get a knit ladder, just one knit ladder up um, your floats. The technique is great. It's not difficult. Now it was a little more critical thinking, like I said, because I put it behind a cable, but it's working out just fine, just fine. So. When I first did it the first time, I was like, oh, this is definitely something I want to show people. Um, so that's why I did video that and show you guys. So here's the Miserina. I'm very excited about it. And maybe I'll hold it like this for a screenshot. All right. And this is all I've worked on. I have not put any more work on my... If you've been around watching, thank you. And if you're new, I have, I am not a person that has lots of whips on the, like going at one time. And I have a Stephen West shawl, the, oh my gosh, I forgot what it's called. It'll be linked down below in the objects I haven't shown you. Um, but I, I still want to work on it. I just haven't. Now I'm like totally engaged in this sweater. Kind of what happens but all right yesterday uh it was saturday and it was the fiber art studio tour here um in mostly out uh west of the city it's a bunch of fiber artists that are all involved if i remember i'll try to link a bunch of them here or maybe i'll just link the fiber art studio tour instagram i think is always linked down below so that's where the best place to find who's going to be where uh, so I went and we wanted to visit the girls at the farm. Um, Karen at Avalon has two daughters and Hazel loves them so much. Well, we didn't get to see Karen. She actually was moving her oldest to into college. So that's, I mean, it's exciting. It's exciting. I'm sure there were tears. It was probably hard. Um, but Kira from the Scrapmaster Studio was at Karen's. So I ended up buying, well, uh, I should have had it down here. Okay, so Hazel had gotten a, a toy elephant. So Kira creates uh, patterns for different uh, stuffed animals. So I end up purchasing Maurice the Rhino. I love him so much. He's so cute. And she gives you instructions. Um, all the instructions are the same. You can just change the weight of your yarn or your needle size. And she tells you that in the pattern. So yeah, Kira Wharton. And so she also had just the garments, like sweaters for sale. So I got, Hazel picked up two new sweaters for her elephant and she's very excited about that. So I wanted to make the rhino. I think I want to make a white rhino with a pink horn. I don't know. We'll see. We'll get, we'll get there. And then Kira was so gracious and, um, I bought the pattern, but then she also gifted it on Ravelry. So I have a digital copy. 
But then she gifted me the goat, too. I can't remember his name. And he's, super, if I can remember, I'll insert a picture of the goat. And he is the only one, because he's kind of like a hippie, and he's wearing like a sweater vest. So he, um, she gifted me that so I could make the sweater vest portion. I mean, I can make him, too. But so I, I can make some more outfits for Hazel's animals. And then her friend, and I apologize, I can't remember her name. She gifted me this cotton fingering weight yarn. So I'm going to try making cotton socks on my knitting machine. That's very cool. So Kira also makes, um, out of scrap fabric, she sews like notion pouches, knitting um, bags, like project bags. So I purchased this little bag here. Isn't that super cute? And it has, it's just pieces of fabric and I love it. I just thought it was beautiful. So I purchased this one. This is um, her name here. So you can look at that. I'll link her Etsy shop, Etsy shop down below. And I love these pouches for my bigger project bags. So I can shove in a little tin of uh, markers. I can put a pair of scissors. I can put a tape measure in here. Any extra little notions can go in this. And I love that. She did warn me. She's like, there is kind of an opening at the front and back of the zippers. So don't put just stitch markers in there, like have them in something, which I always do anyway. And then she gave me a cute little needle case. How cute is that? So if you don't know what a needle case is, uh, it's for like your darning needles or for sewing needles. It has a little piece of felt in here and you can put in your, um, your needles for doing your darning and or weaving in ends. So I'm go, I don't know where I'm going to house this yet. I'm not sure, but I did need one like, cause I don't have one. So I'm very excited. So that's what I purchased. Now let me talk to you guys real quickly our Etsy shop. So our Etsy shop, we've not been very good at putting things in it lately. Just And the cranking service, I haven't had many orders and it's okay. I'm not upset. This is just a side piece for us. Um, cause John and I both have full-time jobs and I appreciate everybody that does order from us. Um, so we have some yarn that's been sitting in the shop. Um, I think I had to reactivate it once or twice because um, the listings deactivate after so long. So I just put up um, no coupon code needed, only the yarn that's like out the door, none of the cranking services right now. I want to try to run some sales for that kind of stuff. But right now it's strictly um, the yarn that's ready to ship. So we have four skeins of this DK 100% superwash. Hazel called it the night, the night's light or the night, the night light, the night's light. <laughs> Sorry. So we have these, we have four of these. So these are 25% off currently in the shop. It's already marked down. You just have to go to the listing and we have some of the farm yarn. So this was local farm yarn that we purchased from the Eastern shore in Maryland. It was milled in Maryland also. So we worked with this small farm to get, um, some, yarn from them. So this is an alpaca farm. They had some other animals, but this is all alpaca. This is a 100% alpaca. It is a two, excuse me, two ply worsted weight. It's 125 yards and it's 2.5 ounces. This is from the alpaca named Bruno and John had dyed this and we have three skeins of it. And this is also 25% off. So three skeins, it, that's 375 yards worsted weight. Okay. Those are all on sale also. And then, sorry from crinkling real quick. I should have taken these out. You guys re might remember I was doing the sock blanks. Well, I sold two of the four that I put in the shop. These are also going to be 25% off. So spooky season is coming. And if you want some pumpkins on a sock blank, that is up for grabs. And also, uh, the other one was my greens with my blobulous shapes. So here's the greens with the blob blobulous shapes that I was doing. So this one, they're both 25% off. I know I, I marked them like $35 and I might have to adjust how much I'm selling them for. Cause I just don't know. I don't know. 
or I have to be better about promoting. That's probably what I have to do, be better about promoting what I have. Um, but for now, to get them out of the shop and kind of have a clean, a clean slate, so to say, um, yeah, 25% off. So, all right, well, I got to put all this stuff away. I have to edit and put this up for you guys. And other than that, I have not um, read anything new. I'm still actually reading the prequel Humber Hunger Games book. Uh, we wa We like watching, like, sequels of stuff so well with Hayes because she gets really engaged and then we watch like the whole thing so recently we watched all the men in black we still haven't watched the last one there is an international so we still have to watch that but um she wanted to watch Twilight <laughs> so of course we had to fast forward through a few scenes but there wasn't it wasn't too much um but you know sparkly vampires I I never watched Twilight I was not a Twilight kid. I never watched it. John had watched the first one with his oldest, but never watched any of the others. So we sat through all the Twilights. They were okay. I mean, I got engaged because no, I wanted to know what happened to the characters. But other than that, I was that it never interested me. It was. I couldn't stop laughing like a freaking hyena when they were like running up the hill and he's carrying her and then he's sparkling and I'm just like, Ugh, this is, this is not my kind of movie, but we, we got through it and we're done. So other than that, nothing else new on the, uh, reading and or watching spectrum. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's what I, that's it. So, whew, I talked a lot and I named a lot of names and I'm sorry. And I have to link all that. I really hope uh, the Miserina comes out pretty awesome. I am I am very excited for it. I think it looks really cool. The top looks really funky. I think it's going to be just a blocking issue. Not like an issue, but like it just seems weird. Most of the tops I've made, this has like the tiniest ribbing. That's it. So we'll see how it lays once it's all kind of done. But yeah. I am going to start trying to push myself. I have lots of sock blanks that I had purchased that I need to dye, so I'm going to be trying to push myself. Life's just been busy. School's starting. I know some people have already sent their kids back to school, so <sighs> I know it's a lot for families. It's a lot for, for everybody when this is this time of year, so I uh, hope everybody's just being patient with other people right now because it's just difficult times. It's like I'm trying to shove in, like, everything I can for this last week of summer or two weeks, whatever's left. And I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself and I shouldn't, but I am. I can't help it. That's the kind of person I am. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. <laughs> oh, oh, and all four winners for the 2000 subscribers, um, three, two have been gifted. The third, I already know which pattern, and I have to do that. And the fourth, I think, still is debating. I have to reach back out because I wonder if they just forgot. So I'm going to reach back out about the fourth one. And yeah, so congratulations again to those people who won. And I really do appreciate everybody coming here. And I know I've been really slacking on commenting back, and I need to go through and try to do that. I try to always like it, but then I haven't been liking it because I have all these good intentions of going back and, like, commenting, and it's easier to find it if you haven't already liked it. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'm gonna go, but I hope you all are taking care of yourselves and each other and doing things that make you happy and not stressing out. And if you need to take a day that you do nothing and just watch movies, just don't watch Sparkly Vampires. <laughs> just do that. Whatever you gotta do. All right. Um, that's all I got. That's all I got. I'm done. All right. Peace, love, and happy crafting. <laughs> Bye, y'all.